when we differentiated e to the x, we got e to the x. And when we differentiate e to the ax, we get a e to the ax. So it follows that when we integrate e to the x, we get e to the x plus c. And when we integrate e to the ax, we get e to the ax over a plus c. Finally, the integral of a to the x is given by a to the x over ln a plus c. Note that a is a constant, such as 1, 2, or 3, while x is our variable. Consider the example, the integral of 3 e to the x plus 5 dx. So this sum of two functions can be split up into two integrals. So 3 e to the x dx plus the integral of 5 dx. So when we integrate e to the x, we get e to the x. So 3 e to the x. And when we integrate a constant, we get the constant by x. So plus 5x plus c. In the next example, we can see that the function 2e to the t plus e to the 3t over e to the t is not in its simplest form. So first we need to simplify the function. So if we split up the fraction, we get 2e to the t over e to the t plus e to the 3t over e to the t. And then use the rule of indices to get 2e to the 0 plus e to the 2t, or simply 2 plus e to the 2t. And so now the integral of 2e to the t plus e to the 3t over e to the t dt is simply the integral of 2 plus e to the 2t dt. And again, we can split up this integral into the integral of 2 dt plus the integral of 2t dt. And when we integrate, we get 2t. And when we integrate e to the ax, we always get e to the ax over a. So when we integrate e to the 2t, we get e to the 2t over 2 plus c. In the final example, we have the integral of 5 to the x dx. So anytime we have the integral of a to the x dx, when we integrate, we get a to the x over ln a plus c. So here when we integrate 5 to the x, we get 5 to the x over ln 5 plus c.